Organisations falling within the scope of the Blue Card system are required to develop and implement child and youth risk management strategies which address eight minimum requirements. This video will guide you through the fifth of the minimum requirements, which is the requirement to have a plan for managing breaches of your risk management strategy. Your risk management strategy must include a plan for managing any action or inaction by a person in your organisation that fails to comply with any of the policies which make up your risk management strategy. So why do you need to have a plan for managing breaches of your risk management strategy? Having a plan allows your organisation to manage any potential breaches in a fair and supportive manner. Without a plan, people may not be clear on their obligations and rights and therefore may be hesitant to report breaches. Appropriate consequences for breaches may not be enforced due to confusion about what course of action to take. Similar breaches may be dealt with inconsistently, which may result in repeat offences and also a lack of confidence in your risk management strategy. Opportunities for training and improvement will be more difficult to identify. So, what sort of things should you put in your plan? Well, your plan should cover a number of aspects in detail. You may want to start with addressing what constitutes a breach of your risk management strategy. You must also clearly outline who must comply with the plan it is important to remember, as discussed in the Code of Conduct video, that your risk management strategy will not likely just apply to your employees and volunteers. Your risk management strategy should apply to everybody who is involved with your organisation, including children, parents, contractors and all other people relevant to your organisation. You will also need to identify who is responsible for the management of each type of breach. You should make sure that you nominate a person or people who have the time, authority, patience and the ability to follow the processes. Another aspect which you will need to cover in your plan are the processes for managing the breach, including the process for reporting breaches. It is imperative that all people should be clear on who they should contact and how they should progress a concern regarding a breach. It is then equally important that the people from your organisation who are responsible for dealing with the breach are aware of the correct process to follow. Suitable consequences and outcomes for breaches should also be outlined. Depending on the nature of the breach, outcomes might include emphasising the relevant component of your child and youth risk management strategy, for example, the code of conduct, providing closer supervision, providing further education and training, mediating between those involved in the incident where appropriate, disciplinary procedures if necessary, reviewing current policies and procedures, and developing new policies and procedures. You must also ensure that you document a process for recording breaches, including outcomes. Consequences will vary depending on the seriousness of the breach. It helps to pre-classify breaches and the corresponding consequences. For example, it might be reported to you that a volunteer at your organisation has been overheard swearing at a child on one occasion. You may have pre-classified swearing as a moderate breach of your risk management strategy. The corresponding consequences and outcomes for this type of breach may be to acknowledge that the behaviour is not consistent with the code of conduct contained in your risk management strategy, to remind the volunteer parent and all other people in your organisation of the child and youth risk management strategy, specifically the code of conduct, and provide clarification where necessary, to provide a formal warning to the volunteer, and to provide further training for staff and volunteers, particularly focusing on positive ways of working with children. Another example might be a staff member witnesses a colleague using excessive physical force as a behaviour management technique. This would be considered an extreme breach of your risk management strategy. The corresponding consequences and outcomes for this type of breach should be 
documenting the details of the incident as soon as possible, following your internal procedures for reporting breaches and disclosures and suspicions of harm, providing support to all parties concerned, including the child who was involved, the person who witnessed the incident, and the staff member, considering appropriate action in accordance with your policy for the management of staff, including considering appropriate disciplinary action for the staff member, and reminding all employees and volunteers of the code of conduct and the responsibilities of their role as per their position description. It is a good idea to have a template incident report form which details aspects of the incident, such as the names of the parties involved, a description of the incident, the date, time and action taken to ensure that consistent reporting is maintained. Your organisation must be mindful that appropriate confidentiality is maintained at all times to protect the privacy of children and young people. To further assist you in developing and implementing effective child and youth risk management strategies, a toolkit which is available on the risk management page of the Blue Card Services website has been developed to provide information and guidance on the eight minimum requirements. Remember, safe service environments don't just happen, they require ongoing planning, commitment and maintenance. Thank you for taking the time to learn about this requirement of child and youth risk management strategies. We hope you found this video useful and we encourage you to watch the remaining videos on offer from the Blue Card Services Learning Portal.